let me show you how we can use Lightroom's masking tools to bring attention to different areas of an image. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So for this video, we will be working on this raw file. And before we can start with the masking stuff, as always, you want to get the base image right. So first off, what you can see on the horizon level, it is very, very distorted because of the wide angle lens I used. I want to fix that. So before applying some basic adjustments, we want to head down into the lens corrections. And here we are not going to work on the profiles. By the way, I already have checked the remove chromatic aberration checkbox. Instead, we want to head into the manual window. And here we want to make use of that distortion slider. So what I'm doing here is I want to bring up the amount of distortion. If you're taking a closer look at the horizon, you can see this will fix the bend curve of the water surface. So that's exactly what we need here. Now with the lens corrections out of the way, we can head back into the basic panel. And for this image, we want to use a very specific profile since we are dealing with a super contrast rich scene. We do have very, very bright highlights behind the mountain and some very deep shadows right here in the foreground. Now to be able to get a pleasing looking image, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Neutral. This will give us a very neutral look, which means the highlights are less bright while the shadows are a little brighter in the foreground. And with this base setup, we can work on the exposure. So what I want to do, I want to bring it up slightly just so we can get back some details from the darkest areas. And at the same time, I want to bring down the highlights because they are a little bit too overwhelming for my taste. So right around here, you can also see looking at the histogram, everything looks very, very good. No underexposure and no overexposure. I also want to bring up the shadows slightly to get back some more details from the darkest parts. And I guess just to be safe, I also want to raise the blacks a little bit. This will lessen the overall contrast a little more, but it also helps to create a very soft look. You can see that very clearly in the foreground. I think this works great for this image. So let's continue. After setting up the base exposure, what I want to do next is to work on the white balance. I want this image to have more of a sunrise feeling, so I'm going to introduce more warmth to this shot. How can we do that? That's pretty easy. Just raise the temperature slider. I want to be very, very careful here to not overdo it, but I think right around here looks great. We still have some coldness in the water while the sky is looking much warmer. Okay, we are almost done with the basic stuff. I just want to add a little bit of texture, giving this image some more sharpness within the smaller details. And at the same time, I want to improve that soft glowing look, almost like an autumn glow effect by bringing down the clarity slightly. And I'm also going to carefully drop the dehaze, just like this. And at this point, we can bring up the vibrance to introduce some more saturation. Done. So that is the image after the basic adjustments. We can compare it to before real quick and you can see the exposure looks so much better already. Now there are a few areas which we want to make stand out a little more, especially right here. The foreground needs a lot more detail and attention. I also want to work on the sky, introducing more colors in here because at the moment it looks rather boring. So let's do this. And we're going to be using a lot of masking here. I'm going to start with something simple. So let's create a linear gradient and I want to cover the top portion of it because I want to just change the sky using this mask. And what I'm going to do in here is to just bring down the highlights. I can safely do that without affecting the mountains since they, since there are no highlights in that mountain range. So this will only affect the sky. The reason I'm not using a sky selection mask is because Lightroom has problems with this image selecting the sky. Then let's work on our subject with those three rocks in the center. I'm going to use a radial gradient and I just want to cover pretty much all the area right here. And to bring some more attention in this place, we want to add more detail. 
I'm going to do this by increasing the whites, making this area brighter first. I'm also going to add a little bit of texture, giving this area more sharpness. And I also want to bring up the clarity, which will really make those rocks pop. Wonderful, that's already so much better. Comparing the foreground to the background, you can see there's a difference in contrast, with the rocks in the foreground being somewhat darker than the mountain ranges in the back. I want to change that. So um, again, I'm creating a linear gradient to cover just the back like this. I want to keep the edge rather thin to not affect the ocean too much. And this time I'm going to say subtract and choose select sky. This works pretty good to just select the mountain range in the background. I do think we need to adjust the linear gradient a little bit more so we don't affect the ocean just like this. And what I'm doing in here is to bring down the exposure. I'm also going to add a bit of contrast. And I do think those mountains look a little cold, so I'm going to add some temperature. All right, and that's it. Now the mountain range in the back is much more in line with the foreground. At this point, I also want to work on the colors in the sky. So let's create another sky selection. And to get a more precise sky selection, I'm going to click on the three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose select sky. This will just clean up the edges around the landscape. And what I'm doing now is to again, click on those three dots and I'm choosing intersect mask with and choose a radial gradient. And with this radial gradient, I want to cover the brightest parts of the sky like this and introduce colors by increasing the temperature. I'm also going to introduce summer tint. At this point, this is not doing much since the highlights are just too overwhelming. So we can play around bringing up the saturation a bit. And if this does not help, let's scroll down a bit, click on this color box. And what I wanna do in here is to set the color to something warm in the red range like this. And let's pump up the saturation. This helps introducing a little more color in here. Wonderful. We can also make the light spill over the mountain a bit by using a radial gradient. And let's create a small one like this and make sure to overlap the mountains. Now to make the light spill over the mountains, just bring up the blacks very, very careful here. We want to keep this effect subtle and I'm also going to drop the dehaze. Wonderful. We can add another radial gradient to this one on the other side of the mountain. And this will give us a very lovely glow effect. Now for the moment, I'm quite happy with the sky. I'm still not happy with the subject. And now let's specifically work on those three rocks. Things like these can be very, very hard to target with masks in Lightroom. But in this case, it's rather simple. What we want to do is we want to choose a color range mask. Then with the eyedropper, just click right in here. As you can see, this way we can create a very precise mask targeting these rocks. But of course, since we're using a color range mask, there are other areas of the image affected. So we want to change that. Just click on the three dots again, choose intersect mask with, and here we are going with the brush tool. And once the brush is active, what I'm doing is I'm going to just paint over all the rocks I want to change very, very roughly like this. And just like that, we get a super precise mask to work on our subject. Now what I want to do in here is I want to bring up the exposure slightly, making these rocks just a little brighter. And let's see, I also want to bring up the clarity. That looks great. Okay, but now what about the water? For that, we can create another mask. This time, let's choose a luminance range mask. Again, we get an eyedropper when hovering over the image and with the eyedropper, I'm just clicking somewhere in the brightest parts of that wave. Again, this will create a very precise selection around those rocks, but again, we wanna use the intersect tool to intersect this mask with a brush. And now I'm just brushing over all the waves I wanna target right around the subject because we want these exact waves to have a little more detail. 
just like this. So what we want to do in here, we want to bring up the contrast. We also want to bring up the highlights, making them slightly brighter. And I have a feeling the blue colors in this wave are a little too cold. So what I want to do to fix that is to slightly bring up the temperature. Okay. And then we can introduce some more texture. Let's raise it quite a bit. I want these crashing waves to be sharp. And let's also introduce clarity. Clarity will also help in a great way to add some more highlights to these waves. So this is looking great. Now we're almost done. At this point, I'm still not that happy with the sky. So what I want to do, I want to choose another luminance range mask. And I want to click right here in the brightest part of the sky. Of course, we only want to affect the sky. So again, click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with and choose select sky. Okay, this is looking much better. We might want to adjust the luminance range later on by playing around with these things right here. For now, however, I think the selection looks quite good. So what I want to do is to bring up the temperature, making the brightest highlights of the sky warmer this way. And I'm also going to introduce some more tint. Again, this will just affect the brightest highlights, not the left side of the sky, which is too dark for the luminance range mask to select it. We can also use that color box once more, set up the hue and bring up the saturation to introduce a heavier color tone. Wonderful. And I do think I also want to bring up the saturation itself, just like this. Perfect, now I'm quite happy with this guy. Just one more thing, I want to use a linear gradient covering the very top part of it, like this. And in here I'm going to slightly bring down the exposure. Perfect. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off the masks for a moment so you can see we went from this to this targeting very, very specific areas of the image with more or less a few more advanced masks. So now that the masking is done, we can work on the colors with a little bit of color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer and here in the saturation tab, I just want to bring up the warmer tones. So red, orange and yellow. This looks great. Maybe let's even raise the blue tones a bit. Okay. Then we can also use split toning in the color grading tab. Again, I want to start with the highlights. Here we want to introduce a warmer hue to make the highlights warmer. Uh, let's go with something like this and bring up the saturation. I'm only using tiny amounts here because there are also tons of highlights in those crashing waves. And as I bring up the saturation, you can see the color of the waves is changing. So we don't want to do that. I'm going to use a tiny amount of saturation like this. Then let's head over into the midtones where I want to apply a cold color tone somewhere around here with a very low amount of saturation. And I'm doing the same thing for the shadows with a cold color tone and a very low amount of saturation. Wonderful. Then we have the calibration tab left and here I'm just going to increase the saturation of all three color sliders. So red, green and blue. If you want, you could also bring down the blue primary hue a bit, but just be careful to not alter the colors too much. But right about here looks good. Okay, then all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. For that, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking. And then we want to bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's it for editing this sunrise image with Lightroom. I hope the masking aspect of this tutorial was helpful and interesting. And I hope you can see how masking can change images quite dramatically if you are using them in a very precise way like we did in this image. So thank you for watching this video and see you guys next time.